What's up, everybody? Pumpkin here. So, new patch just came out, and bronzes are looking pretty good. Um, if you've played at all this patch, uh, you'll notice two things. Uh, Northern Realms is good. There's a good chunk of Northern Realms on the ladder. And second, uh, the new Syndicate leader, DJ, well, he's absolutely insane. Um, DJ plus Townsfolk with Igor means, like, 50-point swing in round three. Um... Basically, unless you can outpoint him, which you can't because no faction can do 50 plus points in a turn, um, even if you draw perfectly, um, or you're playing the mirror, uh, you typically cannot outpoint that list and you basically just lose. Uh, the counter to the list is the mirror, um, 2 0 the deck because it is a combo based deck. Um, if you can win round one and 2 0 them and maybe they didn't draw the combo pieces you can win that way or the third option which is by far the best option well i'll say i enjoy it the most um and that is just killing everything um so as you can see the second card here gigney gigney works very well against a deck like this because the deck is going very tall and all the units are very similar in strength so um i did a lot of testing with square over the last 24 hours or whatever and yeah i like this list the most it's really fun um, it does well against basically everything, uh, in the meta at the moment, which is basically Northern Realms, uh, and Syndicate. Uh, I'll, I'll go through the list, but I'd like to say Erden is another option you can choose instead of, uh, Gigni. The issue with Erden is not great against other factions. So I would definitely say Erden is better than Gigni against Townsfolk, uh, Syndicate, simply because, well... You don't have to line anything up. You just play the card. You get value. Great. Um, with that being said, against something like Northern Realms, it's not as good. Don't get me wrong. Resetting the whole row is pretty decent. Uh, some people are playing Meave. Uh, it's okay against uh, Kira, but it's not good enough. Uh, typically, Kira brings up units, and you can trip uh, pretty easily find triple sevens, uh, and Gigni is just much better at taking points off the board than Erden. So I personally prefer Gigni. Um, you can play Erden if you want. Also, SK. Granted, it's not seeing a lot of play right now. Um, but Gigni is much better against SK, right? Because if they play Olaf or Canute, uh, Gigni does very well against them. Whereas Erden is really only good against Priests. Uh, and they can always Canute the Priests and, like, you have your value. So, yeah, Gigni is just better. Um, there's a little bit more setup to it, but the payoff is typically worth it. So, starting from the top, Ethne. Most provisions, best way to set up your Gigni. Uh, and Shiru. Shiru's really, really good this patch. Uh, the idea is, against Syndicate, you use Gigni to hit their tall and Shiru to wipe out all the small. And that's basically how you use it against every deck. Um, yeah. So, Oak. Pretty staple card in Scoia'tael. Uh, really, really strong finisher in round three. The only time when I don't play this at the very end of the game as, like, last card is simply if I'm playing against Syndicate uh, and I'm banking on those townsfolk coming out with DJ. Uh, Gigni. Gigni's really good card right now simply because cards are bigger. Cards are bigger. Um, it's really good against Northern Realms because Kira is a card, uh, and typically the units next to her go up to seven, uh, which typically means you can find uh, 21 value plus the body of Gigni, which is very strong. Very good against SK. It's good against everything. Uh, the decks that it's not good against are decks that are super control oriented. So in super control oriented decks, I typically just mulligan Gigni. Worst case scenario, your Gigni breaks. But the way I see it, if your Gigni breaks, it means your opponent didn't play any points, which means you probably won because uh, you're wiping the entire uh, low end with uh, Shiru. So yeah, Gigni does brick from time to time, but typically those games are the games where he has zero units on the board, in which case I win. So yeah, playing a two-point Gigni might be suboptimal, but it doesn't really matter because they don't have any units. Royal Decree, consistency is key with this deck. Um, you need to be hitting that Gigni. You need to be hitting that Oak. You need to be hitting that Shiru. It's just a really good card. Um, I've been playing it a lot more often within the last month, and I really do like it. It does feel bad when you don't draw Oak. Um, before I get to this card right here, if you do play Scoia'tael, you'll notice there's no Justice in this deck uh, with the double muscle. So the reason I actually did have Justice in the deck at one point, the problem was if you don't draw Justice round one, it's pretty bad. Um, because... The way this deck works against Syndicate is you have to win round one. 
Um, this is a deck that requires final play because Townsfolk Igor is a one turn combo with Summoning Circle. Sometimes you don't even need Summoning Circle. Uh, well, typically you do. Uh, sometimes they'll have to play like the Folk a little later and you can't kill it because it's too big or whatever. Uh, anyways, uh, you want last say. So winning round one is of the utmost importance and Justice is a lot of provisions into a card that if you don't draw in round one, well, it doesn't really help you win round one. And that's a problem. Uh, there's two solutions to this. You start running 1k Fables, which I was running for a period of time. I was running like a 1k Fable Scorch deck. Um, but putting provisions into 1k Fables feels kind of bad because you have to run Royal Decree too. And running Royal Decree and 1k Fables is just too much. Like you can't afford to do that. It's just too many provisions gone. Um, so no justice. Doesn't make the cut because it's just... It's not worth it. It's not worth it right now because winning round one is so, so, so important. Uh, you, you can't afford to be spending those provisions elsewhere. So one of the cards that I was able to put in because I cut the justice was Carlo. Um, a lot of people, this isn't just Syndicate. This is most factions, even like Northern Realms. They'll play an engine on turn one and TA it because of the Geralt and XD nerf. Uh, XD is like a Denzel. Uh, because of the nerfs of these, uh, the cap went from eight to nine. It means there's less of a chance that your unit that you TA gets Geralted. Um, for the most part, in the last 48 hours, I haven't seen a single Geralt. So basically every cut of, everyone cut it from their deck, which means everyone is tactical advantaging their engine on turn one. And if you have Carlo, well, you're in a really good spot to win the round. So very, very strong card. Uh, helps you secure round one. It's a good card. In round. It's just removal. Removal is good in this meta. And, and more explosive removal is better uh, because the average bronze engine did get... Uh, buffed a bit um, which means doing damage of four plus is very important so Carlo does this job very well Tainted Ale very good card with Gigni uh, sometimes your opponent will use Townsfolk and um, offset them that's only only smart players do that most players don't do that but if they do Tainted Ale helps you um, also Tainted Ale is very very good with Shiro uh, typically against Nilfgaard you play Tainted Ale you ping off their slave infantries or their like ox and serret, and you bring those down to uh, threes so that you can roll off the shearer. So very, very good card. Very good for setting up Gigni and shearer because you just don't have enough ethne pings to set everything up. It's just, you can't do it. Uh, Malayan, fantastic card. She does single pings. Single pings are really good for shearer. Uh, if you're playing against a commando deck uh, for Northern Realms, you can use Malayan and ethne to ping all their fours down to threes and shearer wipe their entire board is quite good um yeah that's assuming they don't give you a gigney a lot of the times they'll just be a gigney there and i'll just take the gigney on the commandos or maybe i'll use uh gigney in round one to kill the commandos and then shiro malayan in round three um you do want to win round one against a full test commando deck the reason being is a good full test player uh they will play around shiro and what they'll actually do is their final play will be commandos plus full test um, and that's kind of a problem if you're planning on wiping them and you don't have last say. So having last say against a good Northern Realms player is very important. Uh, Shiro talked about this card a lot. Really, really good card. Love it. Very strong. Uh, a lot of these cards in the deck have ping, so setting up the Shiro isn't too hard. Um, yeah, fantastic card. Really good against control decks. Really good against Syndicate. Really good against Northern Realms. Just good ar all around. Just a great card. Love the card. Uh, Mahakam Horn. So... This is a interesting card. You don't typically see this in any deck outside of Eldain, and it's really good. So the reason it's really good is because the meta is Syndicate, Northern Realms, or Control trying to beat Syndicate, like Nilfgaard or like Usurper. Now, none of these decks run artifact removal. So in all of those matchups, Mahakam Horn is kind of like an immune unit. Uh, I actually skipped over the Immune Dragon. Immune Dragon is very good against control decks because, well, you know, it's immune. They can't attack it. So uh, Immune Dragon, super, super strong against Syndicate. Uh, they can't place Bounty on it. Typically, I always say this for round three. Very, very rarely do I play it in any other round unless I'm getting, like, blood in round two. Uh, and that's why Mahakam Horns are great. You can play this card in round three, and you place it in between your Immune Dragon and your Immune Milva. And, yeah, you just got a ton of immune points. Mahakam Horn is essentially eight points of immunity that your opponent can't interact with, which is really good against Control Deck slash Syndicate. So, I actually really like the card. Um, I'll play it in round one if I'm against a Control Deck. I'll throw it in the melee row, and then I'll place cards around it. Um, that's actually pretty useful sometimes. So, uh, it, it's just a really nice card. Uh, it's very good if your opponent's bleeding you, unlike other traps such as Pitfall. Good card. Myrtle Brock. So, 
Merkdebrock, this is probably one of my favorite changes from the patch. It went from an unplayable card outside of a very specific Northern Realms deck to a very, very good card. Um, my biggest issue with Merkdebrock was, well, it had order, and order sucks. Now it has Deploy. Deploy is good because, well, they can't, like, counter it. Uh, and doing damage is very good in Ethne. That allows you to kill things. Works very well with Ale to kill other things. Uh, and just in general, it's a phenomenal card. It's it's good in the beginning rounds. Uh, I wouldn't say it's a proactive card, but after they have two cards, it's not bad to play. Um, and it's another card that sets up Shiru. Uh, you can ping those fives down to three, and trust me, there's lots of fives. So finding Brock targets isn't too difficult. Phenomenal card. And it synergizes well with Ike of Denzel. Uh, Ike of Denzel I've been playing because, once again... Uh, people have been playing Tactical Advantage on their engines very, very aggressively. Um, so what I typically do is I'd like to have either Ike of Denzel or Carlo in my opening hand. Because that way, if my opponent does play a tall unit, I have an answer. And that's really powerful. Um, also against Syndicate, some of them are playing like Jackal. Uh, and Ike of Denzel is very good against Jackal. It's good against monsters. It can break against Northern Realms, depending on what version they're playing. So... Do keep that in mind if you queue into a full test list. Um, you probably want to mulligan this away after round one. Uh, me, you can typically keep it because they do pump a lot of boosts into like their infantry. So um, yeah, it's a good card. I really like it. You don't have to play it if you don't want to, but I've been having good success with it. Yeah. Uh, Milva, phenomenal card. Great. It has immunity. It's an engine. Great card. Uh, Dragoon. So Dragoons were technically nerfed. Because while they did go from a 4 for 4 and now they're a 5 for 5, so it's the same stat line, um, the issue is you have fewer provisions in your deck, right? If you play two Dragoons, which you kind of have to because there's more movement cards, or sorry, there's more Rolock cards, so Dragoons typically get better value, and you're playing Gigni, so outside of the Townfolk deck, uh, you need Dragoons some of the times to line up Gigni. So Dragoons are just, you, you have to play them. So... Uh, because they got nerfed and got they went up 1p, you now have 2p less to work with your deck, which kind of sucks, but it is what it is. Uh, Archers. This is the second other change that I really love this patch. Um, Archers felt really, really bad to play with Shearer because Archers were also 3. So, like, you would play Archers to ping 4s down to 3 to set up your Shearer, but at the same time, you were putting a 3 on the board, and that's bad. Um, so now that Archers are 4, it's fantastic. Uh, they don't die to the Shearer, so... Phenomenal card. It's a six for five. Sets up those Shiru's. Either you can ping fours down to threes, or you can ping five downs to five downs to three. So yeah, fantastic card. Love Archer. Swordmaster. Uh, Swordmasters are good. Like really good. Uh, because removal is harder to come by. Uh, these actually stick around quite a while sometimes. Uh, it, it doesn't stick around against Nilfgaard because Nilfgaard runs lots of removal and locks. But against something like Northern Realms, you play one of these, they're not gonna go anywhere. They're just good. Yeah. Great card. Um, Ryehead Officer. It's not ideal. It is three strength, which is bad for Sheer. I will say against Syndicate, it doesn't really matter because typically the way Syndicate plays is they play Bounty and they just kill everything that's not immune. So this having a, a body that conflicts with Sheer isn't the end of the world. Um, I'll play these in round one. It's just a five for four. There's really nothing better to play. Uh, if you look at the 4P cards... Um, for Squayatel, you, you don't really have many other options. I suppose you could play a Farseer, but Farseers are 4 for 4 the majority of the time. Um, you could play Hawker Healer, but you need another unit on the board, so it's not really, like, proactive. Um, yeah. So, I, I think Officers are good enough. BMEs are pretty good, actually. They're 6 for 4s, um, early on. They're quite strong. Your opponent plays an engine, you just kill it. Um, yeah, and because you're running a, a good chunk of removal... Uh, these cards almost never break. Wolf Pack. Um, hmm. so Wolf Pack, I was testing. It's probably wrong. Um, I was running Fledglings, and they're kind of bad because they don't have damage on him. But yeah, I, I guess. I mean, the the idea with the Wolf Pack was two damage is useful because you can use it to set up Shiru, and the two strength body doesn't conflict with Shiru. Um, and none of like all these other cards are pretty bad. Uh, I mean, you could play Cutthroat, but it's also three and it does two damage, but it's like, it takes a turn, uh, an extra turn. Um, yeah, I mean, the other option is Bomber. Problem with Bomber is it's random damage, which means you could accidentally ping a three 
and mess up your Shearer or ping a high unit and mess up your Gigni. So I would not recommend playing Bomber. Uh, you can play Fledgling or you can play Wolfpack. The beauty of playing Wolfpack is when you win, you can say that you beat your opponent with a Wolfpack deck. Uh, skirmishers. Skirmishers are really good now because reach no longer exists. This card never breaks. You play it on the front row. You can hit anything. It has infinite reach. Um, fantastic card. Because removal is more difficult to come by, three damage is nice. It works well with your leader. Yeah, it's great. Um, typically, don't ping a five with the skirmisher unless it's round one. Uh, simply because if you're pinging a five, it sets it to two and it's out of sheer range. So uh, you're, you're looking to be hitting like over five i mean the best case would be sixes but there aren't a lot of sixes in the game um so yeah typically you want to look for a six plus so you don't mess up your shiru um but if you have to hit like a three or a four or a five it doesn't really matter it's not the end of the world uh you'll typically be very close to killing the unit so uh yeah it's a good card um yeah so basically plan for this deck is well, win round one uh dry pass round two go into round three uh, play your immune units, put your horn in between your immune units, and play Gigni and win the game and Shiru. Um, do note, you don't really want to play Tainted Ale at the beginning because they might actually run artifact removal. Of all the decks right now, I would say that the decks that have the most artifact, or, or the potential of artifact removal, uh, would be Nilfgaard with False Siri and Ida and Scoia'tael. So, typically, I kind of save this, or what I'll usually do is once I see two fives that I want to bring down to three, uh, I'll play it and use two charges on the fives. This way, if my, right, so the fives go down to three for my Shiro. Um, I could use all three charges if they have three fives, but that typically is not the case. It's typically just uh, two fives, um, like after my opponent plays like a slave infantry. Um, this way, if they do remove it, not a big deal. You lose two points. It, it, it's fine. Uh, against Squayatel, they're trading plus three for uh, minus two on my side. So they're actually losing points in that way and they're not offsetting one of my Shearer targets with the boost. So in most cases, them idling a one tick Tainted Ale is actually pretty good for me. Um, so yeah, that's typically how I play uh, Tainted Ale. Do note, because you want to win round one very badly, uh, I almost always mulligan this in round one. You want to draw this card by round three and it kind of sucks when you draw it in round one, mulligan it and then never find it. Uh, but that's kind of a risk you have to take because uh, you, you do have to be able to go all in in round one uh, and you don't want to be holding on to a card like this. Uh, and because of that, I usually don't keep Ike of Denzel unless I have a dragon in my hand. So what I'll do is if I have two mulligans, I'll mulligan another card. If I still don't have a dragon, I'll mulligan Ike of Denzel away. Um, yeah, so you don't really want Ike of Denzel to brick so if you don't have a dragon in your hand it's probably correct to mulligan this um if you do hit a dragon you have royal decree you can always royal decree the ike of denzel out to uh get the effect um so yeah everything else i usually keep gigney gigney is kind of your round three uh finisher but unless you're against like a townsfolk deck um you don't have to save it for round three um the best way to know what to save to round three is to know what your opponent's playing. Uh, if you see your opponent playing DJ, they're playing Townsfolk because it's the best syndicate deck right now. Uh, so you definitely need to keep Gigney for round three. Uh, and you have to win round one. If one of those two things don't happen, you lose. Um, yeah. That's just... That's how the matchup goes right now because it's <laughs> it's a broken deck. Um my guess is it'll get hot fixed by the beginning of next week. At least I hope so. Um, because if it doesn't get hot fixed, well, you're only going to see that deck, a little bit of NR, and super strong or super control oriented decks like this. Uh, the only other control deck that could probably do something similar to this is probably Croc. Uh, outside of Squatel and Croc, I probably would not suggest making a control deck because basically you have to be playing some kind of. Uh, explosive removal like Gigni or Scorch, which means you also need to be able to line those up, uh, and SK and Squatar are probably the best factions to do that. Anyways, a little bit of a longer intro. I, I wanted to go through all the cards because some of them were changed, some of them are kind of new with like cards like Myrtlebrock. So uh, yeah, uh, I have a couple games for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoy the deck list and the games, and I'll see you guys on the next one. I was sure before the nerf, uh, he didn't kill himself, so... He blew up the board and stayed on the board. So the deck used to just be all artifacts and then Shiro. You have last say, you Shiro wipe the entire board, and then you throw all your boosts into Shiro at the end. Oh, look! 
DJ. Surprise, surprise. Swords I smile at. Weapons. Sure had four strength. Mm, did he? I thought he had three, but he might have had four. I don't remember. The simplest matter yield the best results. Why wolf pack? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, cause it does two damage, and no other bronzes at 4p do two damage. I know, it's silly, but it's funny. And I can say I beat them with Wolf's Pack XD. I like this. Sets this up. If he plays melee. I don't know, you could drop it. You can play something else. All right, we learned that these cards are insane and we should probably kill them. What if I just Shiru? Can Bork fit in this deck? I tried a lot of Bork last night off stream and it was really bad. There's no other Browns that do too? Nope. I mean, I have them, they're in the deck. They're officers. I don't know, I could Shiru. Is there any neutral dragon under 6p? Cheapest dragon is 8 provision, Merktelbrock, so no. I don't like this, but this combo will destroy me if I leave it up. Playing Gwent off stream? Yeah, I had a lot of fun with Gwent off stream. Crazy, right? Imagine having fun playing a card game. Death awaits us all. We'll kill this next turn. Yeah, I don't know. I tried some really wonky decks last night with like Bork. Um, the issue is like. It's only good in round one towards the end because typically people don't have removal. In round three, it's like super duper bad. Oh, I was going to say, can't I pass? Can't I pass? How does he do 12 in one card? Oh, he has nine coins. Never mind. <laughs> Ten years. This is starting to get awkward. I don't want to play this because it breaks my XD, but I don't think I have a choice. I didn't really want to play the dragoon. I can't play Gigni this round. If I play Gigni this round, I lose. It's so silly. He has to pass. This is a combo deck. Typically you draw at least one or two combo pieces in round one. So, yeah. Right, these combo decks typically need, like, same thing with full test. They, they typically have something like Trog or what are those? Philippa, um, or like Royal Decree into one of those, and they typically don't want to play those in round one, um, which is why you you can you can usually get away with blading pretty hard, and then they they have to pass, otherwise their game plan just falls apart. Um, 
We need to draw this card. This card's huge. This allows me to line up the townsfolk pretty consistently. Uh, Dragoon's really important too, so I can actually... Well, okay. I need Dragoon or XD. I need one of the two. Because typically they play a townsfolk on one row and then Igor on the other row. Your worst card is Royal Decree. Oh, he's going for the thin. Okay, that's fair. Carry over, sure. How's the deck performing? It's doing really, really well. Do you think they'll nerf DJ next patch? Uh, he should have a patch, period. Or a... A, uh, what's it called? A... Shit. He should have a cap. The fact that he can go over 8 is ridiculous. That means he's a better gut run. And gut run's already really good. He's just strictly better gut run at the moment. Which is kind of stupid. It should probably be capped at like 7. Uh, or they need to like change for townsfolk. Um, bad. Do they play sixes? I don't think it's very good. Ooh, these are pretty poorly in round three. No XD, no dragoon, no Milva, no tainted. All the cards we needed, we drew none. That's kind of unfortunate. We could lose this game, actually. We'll see. DJ is a lot like AQ. Imagine if AQ instead of tokens got leader charges when you consumed units. Fix it, DJ. Simply let him have five charges. Sure. I don't know. I don't know what they'll do to DJ, but he definitely needs a nerf. I'd be very surprised if he was not nerfed. What is he doing? Sure. Nerf all combos. I mean, it's not nerf all combos, it's nerf a broken combo with, like, the counterplay is literally have last say and have tall removal. That's the counterplay. That's not very good counterplay, right? Or just 2-0 them. The other, the other counterplay is just 2-0 them forehead, but that's not that easy. I hate it. But there's nothing else to play. I could play Archer. The problem is, if he knows that I play Shiru, he'll just boost everything out of Shiru range and I lose. Because if he has tall and, like, medium, medium being anything, over, like, four and higher, I lose the game. One ethne ping is pretty awkward. Yeah, I can show deck after. Is it really a one card combo? The 
But can he really do it? With summoning, yes. All right, let's see it. Two cards? Well, he's playing one card, but yeah, okay, two cards. See, this is the thing. We're going to lose this game. We needed this. Not drawing this is going to cost me the game. Because he can offset them with boosts. He actually misplayed. Eh, not really, I guess. He only loses one point. Daughters are faring far better than you. Gigney bricks too often? No, it doesn't. It bricks against decks that don't play points, but I already beat those decks. But against the decks that do play points, Gigney is. It allows me to win. If I don't have Gigney in this deck, it means I lose like a bunch of matchups on the spot. I have to play Gigney. You don't have a choice. You have to play tall removal in this meta. You either have to play like super duper point slam decks that output a ton of points like uh, Townfolk or like Full Test, or you need to play tall removal and like a mid range list. Otherwise, you just get smashed. Nah. Wish Shur didn't destroy himself after effect. He didn't used to. That, that was a recent change because he saw too much play. It was too good. The entire deck would literally play all artifacts and then play Shur, wipe the board, win the game. Not very fun to play against. It's a fun deck to play. <laughs> Northern Realms doesn't have four damage. Alright, let's see how many parts of the combo he drew. So no premium TA? Yeah. You think Sirius 6 would be playable? Sure. 5, no. 6, yeah. I, wouldn't, I don't think I would see too much play, but I think people would play it. I would definitely try it. Uh, it's a type of card where you slam it in round one and it gets a ton of value. Onward, so like, you play it towards the end of round one. Yeah, I think she could see play. Might as well. It's only bad if they play Gigni, but no Gigni in full test. Have you shown deck? I can show the deck after the game. Rework Siri Nova. Yeah, I've asked CDPR to rework her. Hopefully she gets reworked at some point. That's a little greedy, don't you think, lad? Please don't have Gigni. I think we auto lose if he has it.
You could play it, but I wouldn't play it in this deck. I would play it in a Meeve deck because you can use Neneki to set up Gigni because you can offensively boost with Nenny and set up the Gigni that way, which is kind of cute. I think if Meeve could boost your opponent's cards, Gigni would be quite playable. I'd rather play Dragon over Horn. Rip. Any thoughts on seasonal? Best seasonal so far. Easily my favorite. I've been asking CDPR for Blitz, Blitz Gwent for a very long time. Um, or I've talked about it a lot on stream, so very happy with it. It's not a bug. Burza said on Reddit they nerfed it for upcoming mobile port. Yeah, but why couldn't they have just done it right before the port? Why do they have to do it now? So we blew a lot, which kind of sucks, but the reality is we should just win. If we draw decently, which means Malayne and Shiru are the two cards I'm looking for. Okay, we're halfway there. We can also just Gigni the fours. That's also a possibility, but he could potentially play around it. All right, very nice. It's funny how this card sucks. It's just too slow. XD? Nine? No. No ale. Ale would have been nice, but eh, it's okay. If it was Meave, maybe, because people go pretty greedy with Tritum, but full test? No. If Kira goes crazy? If Kira goes crazy, I just Gigni it. And then we play Royal for Malayne to set up the fours down to three for Shidolto. And we still have four Athene Pig, so we're in a really good spot, and we have an Archer. Isn't that really early? Steps hmm. up for a three, so I like the play. I mean, sure, you can play Blue Stripe Scouts and make more, but I don't care. We're all gonna die. Has anybody played Shoop Kalanthi? Red Ram, are you still here? Can you hear me? I feel like you would try that. Do you think Reach Patch is good? Um, it feels really good on Skirmisher. Card doesn't suck in some matchups, which is nice. Uh, in fact, like most of the time you keep it, it's actually a really good card. Um, three removal is pretty impactful. Nani. Salon. 
slaughter them to a man. So he plays white reinforcement and bloody flail. A Pega warfare. <laughs> Pega warfare. <laughs> okay. Reach was good on Revenants. Yeah, so, yeah, that's what I was getting to. The fact that Revenants have infinite reach is super monk-ass. Not a huge fan of that. Um, But we'll see. I mean, granted, this is the patch where Northern Realms gets buffed. So maybe Northern Realms needs it. In which case, I guess it's fine. Gagney time? What do you mean? Just 19 points. I never miss. Spawning two power revenants? Eh. No, because then they, they nerf. No, I I think, I don't know. They could do something like nerf this card. Oh, it's a different trap. <laughs> Hausenberg with the seven months. Thank you so much, man. What are you doing? This guy's playing really weirdly. He's like actually playing around Gigney. Cause the idea was like I don't I don't mind these being up because eventually he uses the tick. This row goes up one notch, and then we Gigni all the fours, and then the revenants that are spawned I don't care about because Shira takes care of all of them. But, yeah, he's keeping the row under 20. New sub sound anytime soon? Do you have any suggestions? Okay. Let's get this over with. I don't know, maybe he's just like super duper smart. When there's a they play Gigni and Shiru. <laughs> he's in chat. Yeah, I mean we're not high enough MMR where players would be playing this well. I was playing against Adzikov, sure, but we're not playing against Adzikov, so Uh, 
I don't think it matters unless he's like Bone Talisman or Yen. Before the power of Brockelon. The 